Ninsmere is a fabulous bird reserve. It's the RSPB, the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds. It's their site and it's on the Suffolk coast. It's got the beach, the ocean of course, it's got wetlands, grasslands, woodlands, heathland, reed beds and the birds, you know, hundreds of species of birds. Wild ponies are there because they graze in the proper way, they graze the lands. It's also littered with um, remains that go back hundreds of years. The chapel is 14th century, it's the original site of Leithton Abbey, which was 12th century. There are World War II remains scattered around the place. There's a pillbox actually built into the chapel. The chapel sits in the midst of this wilderness, but there's a direct view from the chapel of a great big nuclear power station. I was very aware of it being there. I was aware of the paradox, really, of this big, you know, the most recent thing that we've done as human beings is to have that there, sitting on the edge of this wildlife reserve. And it was a very important part of the whole, you know, what was compelling for me. I recently made and installed a large glass art piece into the ruined chapel that sits in the grasslands of Minsmere. I was first inspired to do this almost exactly five years ago. It was the first time I ever walked at Minsmere and I came across the chapel purely by chance. I had no idea it was there. And on my way home, the idea popped into my head that it would be amazing to make a piece a kind of a window to go into one of the openings in the chapel wall. I had the beginning of an idea then, and what it was, I wanted it to feel like a burst of energy coming out of that very bleak, broken, kind of grey chapel. I knew I wanted it to feel joyful, and I think I already had a sense that it needed to have a quality of brokenness in it as well, to, to reflect the brokenness around. The other thing that came pretty early on was that it had to be made out of hundreds of little pieces, like kind of floating up into the air like the migrating birds, like the fragments of the chapel. I really had no idea what it would take. I thought maybe we'd get it done in about a year, maybe two years. But of course, what actually had to happen was getting permission, who owned the land, and really finding out if it could be done, not just could it be done in that location, could it be technically be done? Could we put stuff into the walls of the building? So we had to have very, very in-depth technical investigations from the building point of view to the glass to the structure that was going to support it, all of that. And then finally the day came when it was time to install the glass. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Good to see you. The glass is really thick. It's in three sections. The top section is a very large section and it's very heavy. So the morning came when the, the um, glaziers came and picked up all the glass from my studio, put it into the van. You know, it was heavy, but they were managing fine, and there were two of them. Yeah. And then we had to drive it to the site, and it was a muddy, rickety, pitted track. And I was in the car, just kind of feeling every bump in my body that the van behind me was going through with the glass behind it. But everything got there safely. The frame here is made of steel. Um, it's mild steel except for these bits here which are stainless steel because they go into the wall and they mustn't corrode. And then it's been hot zinc treated and it's been powder coated. And you might notice it's not black, it's a grey black, which is really important because I didn't want it to be too, uh, yeah, too black and shiny. And, um, and then we're also just today drilling some little holes in the bottom so that any water that might get in around the mastic and the gaskets and all that kind of thing can drain out rather than form ice, which could become a problem in there. Yeah. The first two sections are quite small, especially the first one. So the first section went in really easily and it was thrilling to see suddenly the glass in the frame for the first time. Wow, I'm happy the sun is shining. The second section was put into position and that was also pretty easy. Yeah, slowly down. <coughs> down. And then it came time for the third section to be put in and it had to be lifted up and then offered to the frame and then that side of the metal would then be sort of clamped on. Yeah. Yeah, you okay? <coughs> and you okay? actually what it turned out was that it was really, really, really difficult for them to do. It was just so heavy 
so that the, these two guys were straining every single muscle they had to try and get this piece in. And every time they offered it up, they had to bring it back down again. And this happened five or six times till we reached a point where I had to go away for a little walk because I just couldn't bear it anymore. Because also the edges of the glass, every time they were lifting it up, would kind of jerk very close to the rough stone wall. And I just had visions of the glass getting chipped on the wall. And when I came back from my little walk, the head guy, the head glazier, had figured out what he needed to do. Basically, they had to build the scaffolding higher and then they could get the whole piece at a higher height and eventually they managed to get it into the frame. That's quite even on both sides. That's even on both sides. Yeah. Okay, that's good. And there it was. And for me, it was an odd moment in a way because I'd been waiting for this moment for years and years and years visualising it. I did have a feeling, of, it was like a gasp, because, <gasps> and, and what that actually was, is I had not yet ever seen any of those sections of window in the true light condition that they, were, that they were now in. So I'd never seen the light shining through. And it was really thrilling for me to see the vibrancy of some of those colors. There's a particular orange, which I get very excited about. an artist it's just been so deeply exciting to make this piece and to respond to this environment and have the piece be in the chapel which is now it feels complete now that it's there it is a piece that's really expressing joy it's about pure joy but there's a but in there it's also about brokenness it's something to do with this whole site that the site is full of wildlife it's thriving wilderness but it's also littered with evidence of how we as human beings have impacted this site. My putting the piece there is the beginning now of an ongoing project.